Hello everyone this is part 6 of what if Naruto was told about his Uzumaki genes early and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to see more comment down below. Na country and Naruto still found time to follow his obsessive ritual of staring into nothingness while sitting by the window. Jiraiya didn't question it often but with a few revelations that the blonde has put forward, he worried. Not for the sanity but what was actually going on in that head of Naruto that his body could just switch off like that. If you wanted to kill him, now was best chance to do. He rarely reacted on first movement. Then again, it could be just an act. Naruto had a certain way of doing things. But for certain, Jiraiya was sure the blonde was alert. You probably couldn't even stab him while he was having wet dreams. The thought made Jiraiya laugh, Naruto and dreams. It looked like something that could never meet. Naruto displayed no ambitions. And even when pressed, he admits to having something but never confirms anything. It was always like playing a guessing game. But Jiraiya had stopped trying to guess Naruto's motives and thoughts long ago. It was a fruitless excise that wouldn't earn him anything other than a headache. The toad sage sat on the bed and glanced down for a moment. He'd left Naruto to do some networking in this village. He wasn't afraid that the blonde would be gone. It was likely for Naruto to look for him than to disappear. In his networking work, he'd received a message from Sunid. He could simply give it but he wanted to speak to the blonde first about certain things. Naruto, Jiraiya started. His voice was quiet yet stern. He waited until Naruto glanced at him before speaking once more. What were you thinking about? Is it Fuinjutsu? I will need to know what kind of seals you have in your head. Naruto shook his head. I'm not hooked up on Fuinjutsu sensei, he said. I do think about other things, I'd certainly lose my mind if all I did was to bath my thoughts with complex work of the art of sealing. You did admit to having spent hours thinking about it, Jiraiya said with a shrug. What would be the difference now? I had nothing better to do then. What else could he do when the village he called home loathed him and tried its best to ignore his presence? Now you do. Naruto stared at the Sanon. He gave the man a questioning look, wondering if truly he wanted him to answer the question. Naruto thought the answer was quite clear and apparent, unless Jiraiya was feigning ignorance. But Naruto really had no time to waste. Seeing the look, Jiraiya asked. You could have still answered, the Sanon more or less complained. He felt as if the lookers asking if he was stupid or not. Naruto shrugged and looked away. His focus went onto the streets. People were talking. Humans were always saying something. They never stopped. Always something had come out. Sometimes it was just pure nonsense. They didn't always make sense. They didn't always speak the truth. The same tongue that clicks lies is the same tongue that sings the truth when the moment calls for it. I'd rather not indulge in obvious things, Sensei, Naruto said before pausing as he thought of what had been on his mind before Jiraiya came. I was thinking about Kumogaku. Jiraiya raised an eyebrow in curiosity. They had indeed visited the village but Naruto had seemed to like the atmosphere there. He hadn't complained and yet it felt like he was going come with some negative thoughts about the village. What of Kumogaku? Kanoa has never had a great relationship with other great powers has it, Sensei? According to the Sandheim Hockage, although the first Hockage did everything in his power to form better relationships, nothing fruitful ever happened, Naruto said. Suna has only been Konoha's ally because it depended on us for its survival and the leaf basically captured Shukaku for it because it didn't have competent shinobi to do it. Kanoa was the one who subdued most Bijuas. Kumogaku has always been power hungry. It looks fine but it's a bloodthirsty village that will do anything for power, the Huger incident. It even tried to kidnap my mother, just for her special chakra, the blonde glanced towards the Sanon. It is curious isn't it? Jiraiya's eyes narrowed. What is? How did Kumogaku know about my mother? Jiraiya frowned deeply. He could not answer the question. He could not. He didn't even try thinking deeply about it because it was the past and bringing it now would just cause problems. I don't know. I would assume so but you also don't have any interest in finding out. Naruto's voice was indifferent and he was no longer looking at the Sanon. I don't want to focus on the past, Naruto. What will it change knowing about it? Shouldn't we be focusing on the future? Naruto could not forget the past. He would not. 
The past was what caused his misery. He did think of the future. In fact, it was because he thought of the future that he thought deeply about the past. We should, Naruto said with a small nod of his head. But it still doesn't take away my curiosity. My mother was brought to Kanoa for the sole purpose of becoming a Jinchuriki. She was chosen amongst her people in the Uzumaki for this reason. But it wasn't something that everyone was supposed to know. Only people concerned were supposed to know and yet, Kumo caught wind of it. Jiraiya frowned. Someone probably told them or they were just good at gathering intel, these kinds of theories were the reasons he didn't want to think about this. It was just going to bring up conspiracy theories that would lead them to trouble. Always something unanswered when it comes to the Uzumaki, Naruto said with a shake of his head. Well, at least now Kumo seems satisfied with its two Jinchurikis, I wouldn't put it past them to attempt to recruit you if they thought they had a chance, Jirai said with a sneer. The great nations are always thinking about themselves and what they can do to improve their power. It doesn't matter if they have to topple another village. As long as they think the risk was worth the gain, they will do it. Naruto nodded his head. It is a world where power means everything. Those who get the best services and more mission requests are the strongest. Jiraiya was silent for a couple of moments before asking. What brought this on? Awagaku. Onoki, that damn stubborn old man. Jiraiya really couldn't understand why he had to view things with the fine margins in which he saw them. The Uzumaki hadn't threatened anyone. He didn't even think that they had the power to threaten any of the great villages. Then again, even before, they hadn't threatened anyone. But Onoki didn't care for those reasons. He did not care. He was unapologetic for his village's actions. There was no way around it though. He just had to try to make sure that Kanoa confirmed with Azushio that all was well. But it might still be not enough with Onoki. There was that possibility and it was something that made Jiraiya to think deeply about this because he could see the clouds of war looming over them because of this. Onoki is just being stubborn, Jiraiya said. It is hard to believe that he has lived through all wars, the Sanan said. The Sandime Hokage had been very different. He wasn't like Onoki. He knew the pain of war but Onoki didn't seem to care. Perhaps it is because he has experienced all those wars that he doesn't have a problem with starting another one, Naruto said lightly. Well, I am sure you will figure a way out, Sensei. I thought thinking about this, you'd be thinking of a way out, Naruto shook his head. I was merely thinking about the reasons why people do what they do and Kumo's unchecked hunger for power. What did he expect? Naruto didn't speak much about doing anything that could change things. He was so different from his father. Naruto didn't even speak about how well he would serve the hidden leaf. Jiraiya decided to drop the matter and turn on something else. Princess Kayuki has specifically requested your services, Naruto. Oh, from the land of snow. Jiraiya nodded. Here is one particular thing. She is going to Azushio. Jiraiya watched Naruto without blinking. He wanted to catch any reaction that might be amiss. But there was none. Not even a slight twitch. It was only silence. My ancestral home, Naruto said in thought. Kanoa must be quite happy about this. I get to see Azu, and all eyes will be watching if I will still go back. No doubt I'll be watched to see if something happens. I can't deny that I am also interested in seeing your reaction at being home, the Sanan said in a firm tone. But I want to admit this will give me a good opportunity to get into the village to try to gather some intel. If you get inside with the princess, you will be able to see the emperor. A truly convenient opportunity for you, isn't. You make it sound like it was planned, Naruto faced with Sanan with a smile. We don't have people with such powers, now do we, sensei? Jiraiya didn't like Naruto's smile. There was a bit of mysteriousness about it. It was nothing dark, just the unanswered questions about it that bothered him. She is going to arrive at the port in the frost. Three days from today. Snow, cold, Naruto said. But what can you do when you have been requested by a princess, and this one is a real princess, pervert sensei? Jiraiya knew who Naruto was referring to but he merely shrugged. You must have made a good impression for her to specifically request you personally as her guard. But of course, since I am your sensei, I have to follow. I would be more than happy if they turn you back, Naruto said eyeing the Sanan at the corner of his eyes. You know, they must know who you are and allowing you to go inside would prove to be a dangerous task. There is that possibility but I am going to be part of Princess Kayuki's security, they can't turn me away, Jiraiya said with confidence. 
Naruto shook his head. Only if Kyuki refuses to abide by the demand to stop you from entering the village. Jiraiya frowned. That would be problematic. This was his chance to gain something on Azushio and be able to tell something to Onoki that will perhaps ease his foot on the war gas. He had hopes. He wasn't sure what he'd find in the village would please him. But he still had to find a way inside. Kyuki's mission was convenient. Perhaps there was nothing convenient about it as Naruto seemed to suggest. Either way, she had requested Naruto. The team would be him and Naruto. You just have to make sure it doesn't come to that. Me. Naruto asked. But I don't control anything. Like you, I will be just another hired muscle. She requested you, dot you must have a way with her, the Sanon then grinned. If you are planning anything, you have to let me in. She is not only famous. But she is a beautiful woman, if you want something from her, go get it yourself, Naruto said. I ain't helping you with madness. Don't be like that Naruto, Jiraiya whined. I know you like older woman. But still, Naruto spoke before the Sanon could finish speaking. That isn't something I ever admitted. I don't have a preference. As long as we are able to get along and the person is a woman, not a child, I don't have complaints. Jiraiya brushed those words aside. Will you make sure she stands by me? It is important that I get information on Azushio before Onoki decides to do anything. We were already talking about how power-hungry Kumogaku can be, we don't know how they might react to this. You couldn't get anything out of the rakage. Jiraiya frowned deeply while shaking his head. No, he said. He wouldn't even discuss the matter with me. Dismissed anything I said. Strong man, Naruto muttered. They probably think they don't need anyone and can handle everything by themselves. I don't know if it is just arrogance or confidence. Either way, it doesn't really matter, are you going with me? Frost. Jiraiya shook his head. We will meet in the wave country. I trust you'll be able to protect the princess along the way. She is a civilian, she'll be traveling with a carriage, you want me to carry the carriage all the way to the wave country. Jiraiya shrugged. You can use your clones. I don't have eternal chakra you know, Naruto said. Jiraiya snorted. Yeah, right, he said sarcastically. Naruto you can create thousands of cage bunshins without breaking a sweat. Even I can't do that. In his fight against Orokimaru, the old man couldn't even use more than five clones without depleting his reserves. You could even make hundreds of cage bunshins and fill them with chakra reserves of a normal jonin. And yet still be able to fight without feeling its effects. You, the Sanon stared, pointing a finger towards the blonde, don't get to complain about chakra. When you say it like that, it does sound like am I a truly blessed shinobi, doesn't it? Naruto asked the sage with a smile. A little jealous. When you become stronger than me. Naruto smiled. Is it any longer a question of when? Jiraiya sensei, the blonde asked calmly. Shinobi of this generation are not strong as your generation, isn't it? They didn't even have to go as far as Jiraiya, but during the days of the Shodai Hokage. There was him, Madara and Togarama. But now, who did they have? Perhaps someone like Guy if he uses all the eight gates, but that was just death. The past generations lived in times of war, they had to be strong in order to not only survive but to protect their villages. Jiraiya said, these days are peaceful, you're not forced to go to war when you are young. Well, with the tension in the air, we are bound to have something in the future. That is why we must always be prepared for anything, Naruto said calmly. I guess I should depart as well. I want to travel a bit quickly. He was going to have to go through the sound, there was a possibility of being seen but if he blitzed through the country, he could make way without meeting any trouble. The other choice was going through the land of fire but that would just make his journey long. He still had to travel a long and slow journey with Princess Kayuki. Ah, it was going to be a truly long journey. But perhaps it would be worth the effort. Who knows? He might end up getting more than he expected. Things had been just fine with her the last time around. It has been a couple of years but nothing had changed and the bonus was that there would no Jiraiya trying to hit on the princess or attempting to make her a subject of his research. Naruto shook his head at that thought. Don't take too long, Jiraiya said in a bit seriously. There are still a couple of things we must do before we head back to Kanoa. And with how things are at the moment, soon it will keep knocking. Naruto merely nodded and went on to pack his things. Hidden leaf just when you think things couldn't be bad, they just turn out to be really bad. 
was there no other way the elemental nations could go about in doing things without anyone threatening to destroy the other? Well, it hasn't taken much to start wars before, and it looked like it wasn't going to take much this time around. And she had been thinking that the generation of Naruto would not get to live through a war but that looked like it was something that would happen. Nothing was sure, but if they moved safely, they might avoid war. Sunid stared at Jiraiya's message once more and deepened her frown, Onoki was going to be a difficult person. She had to measure up against him. She wasn't going to allow him to do as he pleases because he thinks Kanoa is just a relic of the past. It was indeed true that the village has lost out on much of its military power, but they were still a great nation. The losses were massive though. Sunid could admit that much with bitterness. The military strength of the Uchiha was no more, Minato was dead, the Sandime was gone. Even though he was old, he still had his presence and mind. He would have still been the professor. The Kyubi incident also killed many, yes, massive losses indeed. The slug princess looked up when Shikaku walked into the office. She permitted him to sit down before talking. I have called you here because you're the Jonan commander and I need to know the status of our elite shinobi. Sunid said in a serious tone. Shikaku looked curious but he didn't want to think deeply about it. If Sunid was asking such a question, there was something happening. Well, he had thought that there would be something that would happen soon with the revival of the Uzumaki. There were so many great nations involved in the mess that it wasn't something that could be ignored. It isn't as good as it was during the Third War, Shikaku said. Unlike other nations, Kanoa has taken a relaxed stance in training its shinobi. This is due to the Sandime Hokage's policies. We have been enjoying the peace without being conscious that war could start any time. There had been some objections to the Sandime's policies but he was the Hokage and no one could defy him, doing so would be insubordination. However, the policies left the current academy being truly useless in terms of teaching students anything useful about the shinobi world. The Sandime had always said there was no need because there was no war. They were at peace, living peacefully, there was no need to train the young ones as if preparing for war. There was the danger that if you train them preparing for war, when anything happens, you're always ready for war. You won't hesitate because you have been preparing for it. The Sandime had been conscious of it but perhaps he took things a little too far. It was nevertheless understandable at that time because there was no one who thought that there would be a situation that could lead to war. They could not ignore the fact that the likes of Iwa and Kumo have been building their military strength since the last war and it hasn't fought in any battle that would make it lose it its best shinobi. Kanoa hadn't gained anything but has been losing. Sunid stared at the Nara for a long minute before nodding her head a bit grimly as if she was in pain. What do you think our best option is with regards to the Izushiogaku situation? Have we established connection with it? Shikaku asked. Sunid shook her head. But Jiraiya is going there to see a couple of things. Once we have seen, I will send someone to try to broker some form of connection with the village. For now, we have been moving slowly as the village hasn't made contact with us either. Shikaku looked thoughtful for a moment before nodding his head, he could understand Sunid's reasons. And he had nothing against them. I've heard that they don't allow people in, is it going well? Team 7 took a mission to the Land of Snow a couple of years ago, Naruto seemed to have made an impression with the Daimyo there. This Daimyo, Princess Kiyuki Kazahama, she has requested Naruto's services in guarding her towards Azushiogaku. I have assigned Jiraiya as well to the request. Now this was something that opened a curious door. He didn't know if it was a good idea to let Naruto see Azushiogaku but they needed to see where his loyalties lie. This was a good opportunity for them to test Naruto's loyalties, and also for Jiraiya to get valuable information about the village. Isn't this a little suspicious? Everything is suspicious, Sunid said firmly. But I cannot question the connection between Naruto and the princess. I have read Kakashi's report on their mission. I assume that she is probably going there for the Land of Snow's technology. From what Kakashi said, the snow is a technologically advanced nation that even uses tools like chakra armors and trains for transportation. Perhaps Azushio wants to acquire this technology. But shouldn't Azushio Goku have provided for her security? I did think of that, but what if she said she wanted Naruto and they agreed to it as they get to see one of their own without going through the effort of approaching him away from their home? Sunid asked. They have been very secretive. Even though they seem to rely heavily on the wave country, you will never see any Uzumaki in the wave. The leader of the wave always goes to Azushiogaku. 
Shikaku was silent for a couple of moments. He was still suspicious about the whole thing but for now, the benefit outweighed his suspicions. Perhaps it was the convenience about the whole issue. Either way, they would be able to confirm some things and be able to make decisions on their part. At best, I think our best option is to do things that don't threaten Konoha's security, Shikaku stated in a stern tone. It isn't just a Wagakur that was involved. I know there is a lot of mystery about it but we know it is more than just one village that was involved. If it is so, and they decide to attack, do you think Kanoa will be able to deal with it? Sunid bit her lip. This was a situation she hoped she could avoid but that would be the reality if they could not stop the great nations from touching Azushio. It was truly going to be a difficult task. Winning against a Wagakur wasn't even guaranteed but if another village entered the fray, Kanoa would face destruction. It would be especially worse if Kumo got involved. The village has two Jinchurikis who can fully transform. Sunid had a job and it was to protect the village. She would certainly not do anything that would result in the leaf facing destruction, even if it meant turning a blind on Azu's destruction. Would she regret it? Perhaps not. But would she be filled with guilt for allowing Kanoa to be destroyed, very much so that she would wish she had a second chance to change things? But there was none of that in this world. Once you died, it was all over. We wouldn't be able to deal with the danger, Sunid said. Shikaku felt there was something else coming, but... What do you think, Shikaku? Well, if they attack and we do nothing, it is likely they might feel a bit too confident and decide to attack us as well, it is unlikely but a possibility. When it happened last time, we were not told of it, we just heard about it after it had happened, and yet the village did nothing. That is something that worries me about how the Uzumaki will react to our attempts to form connections with them. Trying is an effort we have to take regardless, Shikaku said. People might not know, they might not even know the Uzumaki is a clan, but those of us who know understand the importance of the clan to Kanoa. The village has influenced many things about us, we still wear their symbol, and many people in the village wear the symbol without even realizing where the symbol comes from. Our Fuenjutsu is a legacy of the Uzumaki. They provided for us. When the QB had to be transferred to another host, the Uzumaki sent one of their own. And even now it is one of them who holds the QB. That is a service to Kanoa that we cannot simply ignore even the past leadership seemed to sweep it under the rug because of the clan's destruction. Her sensei, Kanoa, yes, this village was truly ignorant of how just valuable having the Uzumaki as an ally was to Kanoa. But what has Kanoa done for the Uzumaki? In any case, we have to improve training, place strict rules on Shinobi. You will draw out a new curriculum for the academy that will overhaul the current one. John and Sensei's will have to take their job seriously in ensuring that their students are ready for anything. Is that acceptable? Shikaku nodded. I will work on it, he said. Should I call the Jonans who have teams to you? Sunid nodded. Yes, I will deliver the message but we must be careful that word of it doesn't become public knowledge. The Jonans must be sworn with keeping the secret to themselves. We don't want anything that will create tension in the village and burden the young ones. The Godime said. Perhaps if we change things in the academy, we will be able to weed out those who are no fit to become shinobi. There are too many of them these days, Shikaku was willing to admit. Shikamaru was surely going to be displeased with having to work harder than he would like. He could imagine his son's reaction to the news but Kanoa had to prepare. They had to prepare themselves for anything. Things looked like they could get dangerous. This is why we must take action. Sunid said, if we are going to end up going to war, I want to have shinobi who are ready, shinobi who know what they are getting themselves into. I don't want to send people to war simply for the numbers. Land of Frost Naruto was waiting by the harbor, waiting for Kayuki's ship to finally arrive. He had arrived at the port two days ago and each day he came here. He was always checking in to see if she would arrive earlier than expected. But she had not. Yet, he'd waited. The sound of the ocean was soothing, it had felt natural. Perhaps that was why he had enjoyed coming here and didn't mind sitting by the dock every day. People stared and asked questions but he hadn't been a creep who ran away from people when they asked questions. There had been a fisher who saw him since he came here and the man greeted him each day, asking if his guest was coming. The man saw him in the morning and in the evening, he always asked the same question and Naruto's response had always been the same. It was still early morning on this day, but Naruto was already up, feeling the cold breeze that washed over the atmosphere. 
It was around that time that a large ship docked with Princess Kayuki. He had smiled as he saw the woman getting out of the ship with a couple of people around her. Well, she was the Daimyo, she needed her entourage. She was still an actress, she needed her guards. Naruto hoped that he didn't have to guard everyone with her. It was going to be a bothersome job that he wouldn't want to do and Jiraiya hadn't said anything about these many people. He'd said only Princess Kayuki. Perhaps they were going to stay within this land and wait for her return. Princess, Naruto greeted with a smile. Kayuki smiled and held out her right hand. Naruto, she said as the blonde gently took her hand and kissed it. Her smile brightened. You have grown, she said. What lives must grow, Naruto said calmly. You haven't aged at all, I see you're still the same charming woman as you were then, oh, you flatter me, Kayuki said. Perhaps, Naruto responded. Are they coming in for the journey, he asked looking at the people walking behind her. Kayuki shook her head and then turned to her people for a moment before glancing back at Naruto. No, they are staying here. Once I got out of the ship, it was no longer their duty to protect me. They will not travel with us but will stay here and wait for me. Naruto glanced at the people behind the princess for a moment, they didn't look particularly pleased with those words but what could they do? When the master says this has to be done, you do it. If you don't do it, you get fired and someone who can do what is requested is hired without asking too many questions is hired. Naruto didn't doubt his abilities to protect the princess against any danger. If things got too dangerous, he could always summon the toads. He hasn't been doing it recently. In fact, he has gone out of his way to avoid summoning them. Perhaps this was why the toad chief had stared at him with a curious glance the day he had faced Sasuke. Either way, he would have to do it if things got a little difficult. He doubted it nevertheless but there was no harm in thinking of all possibilities. Jiraiya was fine with it because the Sanan understood his strength better than anyone else. Perhaps not as much as he thought he did but he knew better than anyone. Jiraiya didn't know everything that he could do. Some things had to be kept away from people. As a shinobi, you didn't always reveal your cards, now did you? You will be protected with my life, Kayuki smiled. I expect nothing less, she said. I didn't think you'd be coming alone, well, I am not complaining. This does give me a chance to talk to you without anyone interfering. Naruto raised an eyebrow in curiosity but didn't raise his questions about the tone of her voice. Jiraiya will join us in the wave country. He had to go for a little detour but you should not worry about your safety, I will take care for you, the princess nodded. She bid farewell to her people and Naruto took her things before they walked away from the port. There was a carriage waiting for them along the way. Kayuki stared at it for a moment before looking at Naruto. We are not going by land, are we? She asked. Land would be too much for her, and certainly not in that small thing. There wasn't enough room. Where was she going to bath? Naruto certainly didn't expect her to spend time sitting on that thing and then be forced to help herself behind a bush, did he? We are, Naruto said with a smile. I think you will enjoy it. My clones will carry the carriage and I will ride with you. We will camp out in the forest, eat fish, and you'll bath when we find a stream of water. It will be fun, it will be like the shinobi experience. Kayuki frowned. If there had been a route, I would have gone around the lightning country and gone straight to Azu or the wave. Naturally, I kid about all that, Naruto said. But that is what official records will show. I have arranged for something small along the harbor on the other side of the country. However, you must know that the journey might be troublesome. In what way? The sea on that other side is filled with pirates. Naruto said. We might encounter them along the way and I will have to fight them. There might be some discomfort but for now, we have to use that to travel towards the other side of the country. Kayuki was silent for a couple of moments before nodding her head. For a moment, I thought you were serious about traveling inland, my sensei seemed to expect me to take the route because it is the safest, Naruto said. But we can change things. You'll be more comfortable, you just said there might be some discomfort, the princess with a stare. I misspoke, Naruto quickly said with a small smile. Come on, I don't want someone stealing our ride. He walked her to the small carriage. Naruto sealed away her things in a storage scroll and then created clones to carry the carriage. Once he was done, he also stepped into the carriage and it started moving. It's comfortable in here, Kayuki said as Naruto entered. The seats were soft and didn't hurt her butt. There was enough room to move her legs. 
Naruto could even seat across her but she didn't want that. Please sit next to me. I want you a little closer. Naruto didn't question it. He merely moved to her side and settled in peacefully. It was a bit relaxing. He didn't mind that there was a woman sitting next to him with a fragrance that seemed to hypnotize his senses. She really did smell pleasant. He could almost move closer and then request to sniff her a bit. But he did not. He closed his eyes for a moment as he enjoyed the feeling. You're comfortable, any reason, I shouldn't be. It would be a little fun for me if you acted a bit nervous, Kyuki said with a smile. Naruto smiled. Perhaps a couple of years ago, he said. But I have overgrown that. Admittedly, you do have a certain presence about you. I want to hear more about that but for now. I really need to take a nap. Kyuki said with a yawn. Naruto blinked. She hadn't looked like she wanted to sleep. He smiled realizing that it had slipped his mind that this woman was an actress. Putting on masks was her natural for her. She could do it even better than trained shinobi. He shook his head. He was going to have to be careful. Are you sure you want to sleep? I could do things to you, Naruto said with a straight face. The woman giggled in thought. Her body fell over to his and she closed her eyes, said her last words before falling asleep. I trust you won't, but if you want to do something, you just have to ask. Trust. What a strong word to use. Shinobi were not the most trustworthy people. They could not be trusted. They lied and cheated whenever it was convenient. The creature that was called a shinobi was one you did not want to trust blindingly. But he did have an experience with the princess. She had watched him. She had learned from him. And Naruto liked to believe that he was a trustworthy person. Or maybe he was not. Naruto did nothing to disturb the princess from her nap. He too closed his eyes, he could afford to take a nap. He rarely took them during the day but this was convenient. The person next to him was sleeping and the clones were keeping guard. If anything happens, he could be awoken. He didn't even think he could sleep in the sea. This was a good opportunity to sleep. Answer, he forced his mind to obliviousness. Later that day their boat was speeding through the vast waters. The sight was a little frightening. They were surrounded by water and if something happened, they would sink to the deaths. Naruto was a shinobi, but what could he do against the forces of nature? Kyuki hadn't tried to think deeply about it as it would make her uncomfortable with the whole journey. It was just her and Naruto, there was no need have such thoughts. The blonde was sitting by himself, his clone navigating the boat. He was with a bottle of alcohol with him, an expressionless on his face. She hadn't seen that look before. It was strange. He could project himself as a happy person but with a bottle beside him, he looked a bit miserable. It was as if he was reliving something from the past. Kyuki wasn't a stranger to hiding feelings. She wasn't a stranger to putting on masks. She had put on one after being saved from death when her father was killed. She had moved around, playing the character of a princess. She was truly a princess but she had suppressed the reality and focused on the acting, the mask, and the lies. What a life it had been. Kyuki sat beside the blonde, who glanced at her for a moment before staring into the space ahead of him. You'd looked at peace a few moments ago looking at the sea and enjoying the air that came with being here, she said. Peace. That was strange. Maybe something foreign in his heart, his crowded head, has he ever been at peace in his whole life? It was something he desired but he could not truly grasp because really, he was a little miserable in the inside. He plays the role of a delightful person quite well. He had played it since he entered the academy, when he was playing Jenin, even with Jiraiya. But was his life really that delightful? It had the potential to be something else but not now. Not when he was still like this. I sometimes enjoy a good view of nature, and when the wind blows like this, it fills all my senses with feelings that make me want to enjoy it, Naruto said with a small smile. If you become attuned to nature, you get to feel its mood, something like that, Kyuki stared into the clear sky, it was going to get dark soon. They would travel all night and probably reach the destination somewhere in the afternoon but she wasn't complaining. There was calmness in the sea. She was calm. The atmosphere wasn't bad and best of all, she didn't have to think about her duties and the nagging old geezes she has in her country. I can never be in the same wavelength with nature, I am just blissfully oblivious to its mood. What I see is what I believe, the princess said. Well, you are a shinobi, you train in such things, she said. She took the bottle away from Naruto and put it on her lips. That's nice, she said. Strong, I think I was drinking you when guys came to get me. 
Naruto nodded. Yes. Drinking alone in bar, he chuckled. Something amusing. Naruto just shook his head. I just remembered something, he said. The drinking alone, it had become his favorite time, hasn't it? Perhaps it was the solitude and the idea of loosening the screws in the head that made him a little free. He would have to watch it, though, he drank a little too much when he tells himself it was time for the party. It has been a long journey, yeah, Kayuki said, thinking of her own miserable journey. When did you start drinking? I don't know, Naruto said. One day my sensei invited me over to a bar and I was drinking. I had a couple and when my mind felt loose, I felt that there was nothing holding me back. There was no anger, no hatred, no burdens, I felt free. But when drinking he tells himself that he was drowning in his misery. Maybe that was right. Maybe not and he was just drowning his misery away in the alcohol. That is dangerous you know, Kayuki said in a serious tone. You can't allow yourself to be drunk to experience freedom. You are still young, if you get into it, you will have difficulty trying to break free, saying that, she took the bottle away from him and put it on her side. No more drinking for you. Are you my boss now? Yes, I did hire you after all, Kayuki said in a firm tone. What kind of a guard are you anyway? How do you drink when on duty? Naruto smiled. It is unprofessional, he said. Despite what I said, I don't really get drunk that often. Over the past year, you can count the times I have been drunk, and that is maybe three times. There are days I set myself up just for drinking. The last time I got drunk was simply doing it because the people I was with were drunk. Kayuki looked thoughtful, what makes you miserable, Naruto? The past. Wasn't I also hindered by the past? It was the past that made me unable to face forward, no, I just didn't want to face it, I ran away from it. That was why but I am not running away from my past. I have stared into its hateful eyes, fought with it, sometimes it nearly knocked me out, but I have fought it and I have not lost. But because it has been filled with injustice, I can't let it go. I want to wear it over my shoulders and express the injustice to those responsible. What happens if you don't? If I let it go, I won't be miserable, I'll be free but nothing changes. Nothing changes, Kayuki. This is why I have resolved to carry it. But it is proving to be difficult. Naruto nodded his head, a sad smile on his lips, he responded in whisper. I have had time to think about things clearly. You know, thinking and thinking has been what signifies my whole life. I have thought of many things, being happy, being miserable, regrets if I chose to walk on the wrong path. Things are always changing in this world. Nothing ever remains same. You will change, but I think I have reached a point where I can't change anymore, I have accepted my roles, my job, my path, the princess said. Changing means abandoning it all or doing things in a different manner but I don't want to abandon my people, and the way I have been doing things has made my people happy, so I am content with things as they are, she paused and stared at the blonde. If you change, what do you think your change will do, how will it affect those around you? Naruto didn't respond to the question but he did smile looking at the princess a bit fondly. Princess, you have truly become a different person. You were a miserable person when we first met, you look at you now, she smiled, it comes with the job, she said. Wave country, you have a strange look on you, Jiraiya said watching the blonde stand motionlessly. Naruto glanced at the toad sage for a moment before looking up into the sky. He was truly always wondering if there was life within the heavens but he didn't know. He would most likely never know about it because he could never reach there. It wasn't a place for humans. No matter how many times they try to go up, they would eventually be dragged back down to the ground. When did you arrive, sensei? Naruto asked calmly after a couple of moments of silence. Not long ago, Jiraiya said. Where is our friend? Resting, she didn't get much sleep along the way, Naruto responded before putting both his hands in his pockets and started walking away. This had been his training ground when they arrived to the wave country, a place he had met Haku, that delightful had such innocence and purity, it had made him reflect on himself. Perhaps it suited Haku given his bloodline. White was a symbol of purity. He contained the Kyubi, a Bayou known for its hatred and malice. I hope that wasn't your fault, Jiraiya said in a sly tone. Naruto glanced at the Sanan, who was now walking beside him. If you had any shame, I would ask the question but I know the answer, he said with a shake of his head. It is the journey, he said. 
You are truly strong when you fight to protect someone precious to you, someone said words along those lines while I was here. I am really a sentimental person, so I keep such things in my head. That is indeed the truth, Jiraiya said with a nod. He wasn't agreeing to Naruto's thoughts about being sentimental but the words he had been told. We have to go now, time isn't really on your side, we have things to do and you have another training to do, what training? Jiraiya merely grinned. I'll tell you after this mission, the sage said. Naruto shook his head, he didn't question the Sanan, he just continued walking with the man in silence. They walked through the streets of the wave. It had truly changed from the last time he came here with Team 7 on their first mission outside of Kanoa. He was a little bit of a known person in this place. Then again, they had a bridge that was connected to the Fire Nation named after him. When they reached the hotel Kayuki was at, they found the princess sitting a single couch. I was wondering where you had run off to, Naruto, she said before glancing at the man beside the blonde. Jiraiya-sama, she greeted without a smile. Jiraiya smiled. Princess Kayuki, you look as beautiful as always. The princess didn't respond to Jiraiya's compliment. Are we going now? I took the liberty of preparing everything. You know, the people in Azushio are waiting for me and I'd rather not let them wait for me, we are going to depart now, Naruto said as he walked over to take Kyuki's things. I assume you two have some history. Well, given Jiraiya's skills, it shouldn't be surprising, I wouldn't call it a history, Kyuki said. But we did meet once, she responded as she stood up. I thought your sensei was someone else, not him. You had Kakashi with you the last time around, what changed? He was relegated, Naruto said with a shrug as he looked around to ensure that he wasn't missing anything. I don't need to say anything but I really hope you behave sensei, we don't want you doing anything that might get us in trouble with the leaders of Azushiogaku. Jiraiya glared at Naruto. I'm not a child you know and I should be the one telling you to behave. He said sternly. You really have no respect for your sensei. Naruto shrugged his shoulders carelessly. There isn't really much worth respecting, pervert sensei. You're calling me that in front of her. Jiraiya looked shocked. A, hey, Naruto said carelessly. It is the truth and if you have met her before, it means she knows you are a pervert, right? Jiraiya mumbled something under his breath causing Kayuki to laugh. You two seem to get along just fine, she said with a smile. Well, he is my, sensei, why are you putting it like that? Who knows? Naruto said before turning his attention to the princess. They walked safely for a couple of minutes and got into a large ship that was waiting for them. Naruto helped Kyuki into the ship and helped her towards her resting place. She stayed there and Naruto walked towards the deck, where Jiraiya was waiting for him. I couldn't get a damn thing about Azushiogaku from the people in the wave, not even the merchants know something, Jiraiya said with frustration. I couldn't get a chance to work with the leader of the wave but I doubt I would have been able to get anything, how do you control a nation, have so much influence over it and yet the people around you remain clueless on who you truly are. He had no doubt his mind that he was truly dealing with some crafty people in a zoo. It did make him excited knowing that he was finally going to meet them but he really hoped that he was able to learn something. If they managed things in the same level as they did with the wave, it was really going to be a difficult mission and one that would truly make him nervous. Iwa's actions could be determined by what he was able to find and before soon it sends anyone to the village, she needed something that she could work on. She wouldn't get it if he wasn't able to work around Azushio's security measures. I cannot answer that question, Jiraiya, you are the one who deals with intelligence. You ought to know, Naruto said with his eyes staring directly into the water below. You're not helping, Jiraiya said with a frown. I didn't think you needed my help, sensei. You did go on your way to do things without me, you can still continue without me, but if you need my help, I can offer my services. Jiraiya shook his head. I can't expose you like that, the Sanan said in a calm tone. You need to focus on protecting Princess Kayuki and I will handle the other issues. I hope I don't get caught, he said with a shake of his head. But if I still get caught, it is part of the work. I doubt they'll do anything about it. I hope you don't get them thinking that she intentionally brought spies into their village, Naruto said to the Sanan. That is something I have to consider when moving, the Sanan said in thought. But I simply can't let this chance pass. Them banning me from their village will be worth stopping a Wagakur trying to invade Azu once more. Naruto said nothing in response.
Azushiogaku Jirai's eyes were as sharp as when he was in his younger days, he didn't want to miss anything. The first thing he noted was that there was no way to enter the village with the whirlpools twirling around. They were stopped before their ship passed. It made him realize that some of them were man-made. It was possibly the work of Fuenjutsu. When the ship docked, there was only one person who was there. But there had been four large ships docked by the small seaport. He assumed that although there were no people around, this was probably the only way to enter Azushiogaku. The man who was waiting for them was just a civilian. He led them through a narrow road surrounded by trees. After walking for a while, they reached two large gates that were closed. The man told them he was stopping there and then turned away to leave. One of the gates slowly opened and the three moved closer before entering the village. It was a completely different atmosphere, there were people around, a bit tall buildings made up the village. The buildings didn't use wood like what they use in the hidden leaf. Across a stream of water that went through at the heart of the village, Jiraiya could see ruins, the result of destruction. Perhaps they had been left there as a form of a reminder to what was done to them. What was obvious was that the village seemed a bit bigger than he had anticipated and that worried him. The people seemed different, and Jiraiya concluded that these were people from different lands. Everything looked normal. He couldn't see a single shinobi. He couldn't see any red hair. But when they arrived deeper into the village, Jiraiya started to see them, the Uzumaki. Jiraiya searched for Naruto's reaction but there was none. It was then that another person took over escorting them. Haku smiled at the guests. Princess Kiyuki, I am pleased to see you again, he said quietly. Jiraiya-sama, he then turned to the blonde. Hello Naruto, it is good to see you again. I was actually happy when told that you'd be coming here. You know each other. Jiraiya was quick to ask. Haku nodded. I was their enemy in his first mission out the leaf, he said. Please follow me, I will lead you to your hotel. Jiraiya took the chance to walk beside Haku so that he could ask questions. Although he could see red hair, there wasn't many of them. This was what destruction did, wasn't it? Perhaps if they hadn't been destroyed, they would have been running through the streets, looking all energetic as Kushina had been. I don't see a lot of Uzumaki around. These are just the handful of survivors from the invasion, Haku said. But even before, the village wasn't full of Uzumaki people. There were other people around. You are not from here are you? Haku glanced at the Sanon with a smile. Jiraiya-sama, we know about you, to be honest, there was a debate about letting you into the village. We assumed that you'd behave given that you were here on a mission. And we would like you to behave. We cannot allow you to walk around the village without anyone accompanying you. If possible, we'd like you to stay by Princess Kiyuki's side. Jiraiya frowned. You're not even going to let us take a tour around the village. Haku shook his head. No, he said. You are not here for a tour, are you? but we would however, offer one to Naruto. Special treatment. The Sanon asked with narrowed eyes. You could call it that, but it is a fact that he is Uzumaki, they are treated as precious commodity in here. Jiraiya glanced at Naruto at the corner of his eyes. You say that but you haven't made a move on him. That should be simple to understand, Haku responded calmly. Naruto is a shinobi of the hidden leaf. Any movement towards him wouldn't be welcomed. It is something else since he is a Jinchuriki. The leaders doubt Kanoa wouldn't be willing to part with the Kyuubi. Without a doubt but the Kyuubi wouldn't be the only reason. Naruto was a valuable asset to the Hidden Leaf and allowing him to leave would only weaken them. But it would also cause Azushio trouble if other villagers knew that the village was in possession of the Kyuubi. They would quickly turn their attention to destroying it without asking any questions. That was a reality that he didn't want to see. Haku didn't say anything more to the Sanon. He simply led them towards the hotel before departing. They were all booked in different rooms, with Kayuki surrounded by the two men. Jiraiya knocked in Naruto walked into Naruto's room and found the blonde lying flat on his back. The window was there, but he wasn't by it. Tell me about that Haku. There is nothing much to tell other than the last time I saw him he was dead and that he is holds a bloodline, ice release, Naruto said while staring at the ceiling crimson ceiling. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes with a bit of danger in it. Dead. You certainly didn't look like you saw a ghost when you saw him. It was like you knew he had been alive. Naruto glanced at the toad sage for a moment with an expressionless mask on his face. You don't have to shout, you know, he said. That aside, regardless of what, when have you seen me giving any funny reactions? 
I had more things to think about other than seeing someone who was supposed to be dead. We are not exactly living in a world that doesn't make the impossible possible. Jiraiya was silent for a moment. I forgot that you were walking in the very land that your mother was born, the Sanan said. When are you going to take the tour? I haven't thought of it, Naruto said with a slight shrug. Take it tomorrow, you might be able to move freely given that you are Uzumaki, and they are offering the tour, the Sanan said in a firm tone. I will head out later on, you can watch the princess. I plan to do so, Naruto said. It is going to get dark soon, for now, I will take a nap and when I wake up, I will go to the princess to entertain her. As her guard, I can't leave her to be alone before she decides to rest for the night. Later that night Azu, it looked like it didn't have any shinobi but when it was night, you could not mistake it, there were shinobi around the village. Jiraiya could feel shinobi moving around the buildings but there was one place that seemed to hold secrets, the emperor's compound. It didn't seem to hold any guard. There was no one around. It was curious but although he was cautious, he could not afford not go. He had been extra cautious about approaching the villagers. He didn't want them to know anything. The moment he starts asking questions, he was likely to land himself into trouble with the people watching over the streets as if they were hawks. The toad sage climbed the wall that took him into the compound. His instincts kicked in as he felt that he was in a dangerous place. He only took a single step before someone flashed in front of him. He frowned, he had been caught. There was only one person. If he managed to disable her, he could still try something. He took a stance but was forced to take a step back when a wall of crystal formed around him. Gurun smiled seeing the Sanan in a fighting stance. He was a powerful shinobi. She would rather not fight him. That aside, fighting him was pointless since she wasn't going to end up torturing him or cutting off his head. Jiraiya-san, I believe you were warned about walking without someone to guide you, she did not move from her position. I couldn't find a guide, the Sanan said, he still had his guard up. I don't plan on fighting you, Gurun said. Do you know where you are? The Emperor's compound, the Sanan responded. Gurun nodded her head. You are not allowed to enter the grounds of the compound unless invited by the Emperor or given the permission to come in and go as you please. It is a rule in this village and the people respect it. You are not one of us, we usually don't forgive rats. Jiraiya narrowed his eyes with danger. Usually. Well, you are a special case and we don't want to end up having any problems with Kanoa. However, since you obviously cannot be trusted to follow our village rules, we will escort you out early in the morning. For now, please don't make any trouble. Allow me to take you back to your room, where you will not leave for the rest of the night. If I refuse, I have heard that a couple of times, but do you want to find out? Jiraiya had an itchy feeling. He was certain he could handle the woman but there was something off within the compound grounds. He touched down the ground and channeled chakra. It was quickly absorbed. So this is how you found out I was here, he said looking towards Gurun. There is a massive barrier within the compound that tracks chakra and absorb it as well. I guess for me, whose chakra is foreign, I can't use ninjutsu in this place. Gurun didn't comment on the Sanan's words. Are you going to allow me to escort you? How is this going to affect things? It depends on your reasons, really. We don't think you are a bad person but we still don't like people who don't follow our rules. Gurun said. What is your reason, Jiraiya-san? Jiraiya considered his options for a moment before speaking. A Wagaku wants to determine whether you are an enemy or not. They said if they discover that Azushiogaku is an enemy, they are going to destroy this village. When I told him that Kanoa wouldn't stand for it, he said it was fine. I am concerned about what he will do. I thought I find something, I would be able to give something to the Suchikage that would calm things a bit. Why didn't you just ask? Jiraiya smiled. Well, he really couldn't say. You still need to leave tomorrow, Jiraiya. But if Kanoa asks nicely, we may respond, Gurun said as she started to walk towards the Sanan. Shall we? She snapped her fingers and the crystal disappeared. Jiraiya frowned. You're also a bloodline holder, aren't you? You are a spy all right, Gurun said. But please, Jiraiya, don't try to leave your room this time around. We will know and we won't be pleased about it. We will be forced to make you leave even at this time and the sea can be rather moody at night. Meanwhile at times, Naruto really applauded his ability to be able to talk to anyone about anything. He hadn't been used to regular contact with people. 
Quite honestly, the Shinobi Academy had been one of his biggest task. But Naruto had done it. He had pulled it off and still continued to pull it off. He was also able to understand certain things about people. Perhaps the knights in the bars were truly helping him in understanding people better. There was no human. If you were going to work out with people, you needed to be able to understand them, to know them, and to be able to read them. The real journey was up ahead. He was still learning many things about the shinobi world, about the great nations. Haruzen had taught him most things about the elemental nations but he was learning it through experience. Sticking with Jiraiya had truly been a good idea on his part. Then again, the Sanan wasn't a bad person. Naruto was sure he was busy trying to infiltrate Azushiogaku's defenses to gain information. Naruto snorted at the thought. There wasn't going to be any luck in anything. Still, Jiraiya liked to gather information. His instincts could not be refused when he sensed something fishy. It's not really a good thing to be occupied with your thoughts when you are sitting with a beautiful woman, Princess Kiyuki said to Naruto with a smile on her lips. Naruto glanced over at the black-haired woman before shaking his head. It depends on what you are thinking, I might be thinking deeply about you, he offered. If you are a nervous child who is afraid to voice his thoughts, I can understand that but you are not a nervous child, are you? Naruto smiled. Who knows? He threw his hands in the air. Kayuki was silent for a couple of moments before speaking on a different matter. There is no place like home, is there? I was forced to flee when my father was killed by my uncle. I never looked back. I enjoyed being an actress, yet I was miserable. I had left my home and my uncle was doing as he pleased. But now, I am back home, I feel at ease, at peace. I am happy. As you say, there is no better place like home, Naruto said. You're always fond of home because you know no matter. I can always go back there. Besides, what is better than being of service to your people? The Daimyo smiled. Nothing is better, she said. Though, you do need to live. When acting, I simply have to focus on being an actress but after being feudal lord demands more attention from my side. My advisors are always nagging me about this and that, it is frustrating at times. Naruto chuckled lightly. I thought you'd be used to it by now, he said. Can't get used to it, she said with a shake of her head. It even makes me fearful knowing that I will be Daimyo for the rest of my life. Feudal lords are not chosen like cages of hidden villages. They were the people who ruled over countries not by skill and qualification but by birth. You'll probably be replaced by your heir. Kayuki frowned. I'm not married yet, she said. The people there are trying to force me into marriage with princes from other nations just so I can have an heir. They'd be more than happy if I quit my job after producing a successor. Well, you are the only one in your family, so you have to do something, Naruto said. Say, Naruto, she started in a firm tone. You have a good standing, when you have reached that age, can you promise to marry me? Naruto stared at the woman for a long minute trying to figure out if she was serious or not. When she didn't say she was joking, he sighed. You want me to get killed by your fanboys? She smiled. I doubt they'd succeed, she said with amusement. Most of them who want to marry me are after money and fame. Those who just like me are just not worth it. What of me? You'll be at your home and I will be at my home, Kiyuki said. It will be convenient. But we would have to talk about the other issues. You mean issues of the bed? Naruto asked with a straight face. The woman smiled slyly. You are not so innocent, you are not innocent either, are you, dear? Naruto said but before Kayuki could respond, there was a knock on the door. Naruto called for the person to enter because the door wasn't locked. Gurun walked into the room and looked between Kayuki and Naruto. They were sitting across from each other. There was peace in the room. Sorry to disturb you at this time, but I just wanted to inform you that we have caught one of your guards in the grounds of the Emperor's compound. Because he has disobeyed the rules and cannot be trusted not to do it again, we will escort him away tomorrow morning. He will return to the wave. I called it, Naruto said with a smile. You owe me 1000 Ryo princess. I'm not paying that, you had inside knowledge, Kiyuki said. Excuse me. Don't worry about it, I can understand, Kiyuki said to Gurun who looked surprised. I will be fine. A zoo is the safest place anyway. My meeting is still scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m., yes. I'm not certain about that, Gurun said with a shake of her head. I will have to inquire and report back to you. 
Kiyuki shook her head. No need, she said. Thank you for the warning, I will have a word with Jiraiya-sama, she said. Gurren knew she was being dismissed. She didn't linger around for much longer. She cast her eyes towards Naruto, she tried to say something but he caught her look and smiled. A look flashed across her eyes, she returned the smile before turning away without another word leaving her lips. Who am I going to hold discussions with anyway? I assume you're not going to join, Yoshino, Naruto said. I'll be with Haku. The princess nodded. Where were we? Oh yes, we were getting to the good part before the interruption, Kiyuki said with a smile. Naruto shared the smile. Azushio will arrest you for trying your moves on a young one, princess, he said. Kiyuki laughed upon hearing those words. I wouldn't mind, as long as I stay your prisoner. But you must still look after my land. She stood up after saying those words and then walked over to Naruto. She lifted her dress, exposing her thighs before she sat on him, both hands on his shoulders. You brought me all the way here, I'm allowed to do whatever I want with you. Besides, it's a little taste of what it will be like when we marry. I don't remember agreeing to marry you, Naruto said. He was saying that, his hands were already on her hips. At least you're not wearing your Daimyo clothes. It would have been a hustle, he said. Kiyuki smiled. Maybe, she said before leaning closer. Naruto suddenly pulled her closer. No teasing, he said before capturing her lips. Kiyuki's lips were soft. She was taking the lead even though he was the one who initiated the kiss. He allowed her to do what she pleased, he permitted her tongue to slip through inside his mouth. After a couple of moments, they separated. Someone has been practicing, she said with a smile. And someone feels sexually frustrated, he said as he stood up. He carried the princess bridal style. Let us take the bedroom where the walls are thick and Jiraiya won't eavesdrop. Being carried like this, Kiyuki smiled. There had been many moments she was carried like this in her movies. It has always felt so hollow, but this was exciting. This is rather fitting you know, I am a princess, and you are, Naruto stopped her from talking by capturing her lips once more. Let us leave that, he said. When they arrived at the bed, he gently placed her down and quickly got atop of her before she decided to beat him to the punch once more. Slowly, he tore off her upper clothing, exposing her chest. You are going to pay for the replacement of those, she said with a smile. I will forfeit my pay on this mission. I thought you were paying for this mission as well. Naruto shrugged. I'm just a genin from Kanoa, where do you think I will get that kind of money? Kiyuki laughed in response. The following day, Naruto had laughed seeing Jiraiya's miserable face as he was being escorted away from the village. He never listened and had been caught red-handed. It served him right. The Sanan did have many moments in which he was caught doing things he shouldn't be doing. It was mostly when he was peeping but he had never felt sorry for the sage and he hadn't felt anything even now as he was being taken away. He had even waved his right hand, saying goodbye to his sensei. The only thing that brought his mood down was the fact that Sanan was likely to question him more than he would have if he had done things right. It was going to be like an interrogation. But he has always handled questioning fairly well, hasn't he? Perhaps he had learned while being watched by the sharp gaze of the Sandime Hockage. Those eyes might have been old, but they saw clearly. I'm surprised that he chose to disregard my warning, Haku said to Naruto. He had honestly been surprised to learn that the Sanan had been caught in the Emperor's compound. Couldn't the man have just relaxed in his hotel room without getting too curious? It was like this with everyone, wasn't it? Itachi did the same thing, but at least the Uchiha was never brought into the village. He was much of a danger than Jiraiya was. Well, the leaders would be happy that they finally got rid of the Sanan. They hadn't been exactly happy with his appearance in the village. It wasn't that he was seen as an enemy but it was his curiosity that had been a bother. Jiraiya doesn't follow anyone's rules, he likes doing things on his own, Naruto responded calmly. Well, I am not sad he got caught. It should have taught him a valuable lesson, that is rather cold, Haku said. He is your sensei, Naruto shrugged carelessly. Jiraiya wasn't a child. He was a grown man. He didn't have to worry about the man's feelings. That aside, the man did like teaching by experience, this had been his own trial by fire. He broke the rules, he must face the consequences of such actions, Naruto said with indifference. Kiyuki had already gone for her meeting. Naruto didn't know how long it would take, but he wasn't worried much about it. 
She was going to have another meeting in the evening and they would be able to leave Azushio tomorrow morning. Jiraiya would be waiting impatiently for them. Perhaps by then he would have made another attempt pass through the village's defences. For now, Naruto had time. He would have time for most of the day. With the princess away, he could wander around. He has missed the feeling. Sometimes, Yu, Haku didn't finish his thoughts, he shook his head. Do you want to settle down or should we go to side of the river? It was just ruins. A place left to remember the injustice of the past. It was a reminder of how cruel this world of shinobi could be at times. When he was seven, the image had brought in some raw emotions from him. He had experienced something strange and this emotion is what brought him to this point in his life. Naruto did wonder though, how different would things be for him if the Sandime hadn't brought him here. Things would be different. He certainly wouldn't have been standing here. He would have been back in the hidden leaf, maybe miserable or happy. Anything could have been possible. Little things could make big changes. But Naruto was thankful to the old man for bringing him here, for everything he told him about the Uzumaki. By the time he came here, he had truly felt like he had known them, he was one of them. Naruto nodded his head but before he could say anything, his bird friend chirped as it landed on his left shoulder. He had missed this messenger. He hadn't been able to get the chance to do anything because Jiraiya was always around. He turned to Haku and spoke. Well, I wanted to spend some time, but as you can see, my friend here has brought me work. That will be it for this video if you want more comment down below, like, subscribe. And see you guys later.